morning and welcome back to Sorky Form Set, guys. You might be wondering why I started the clip like that. Because my mind is blown that they are now printing 3D meat. Folks, let me say it again for you. They are printing 3D meat. Your steak could soon be 3D printed. That's if you live in Europe. And something else so very deceiving is they say if you live in Europe, when the truth comes out, folks, that North America has one of the, the largest investments in 3D meat and more companies coming out of America and Canada for 3D meats. Now, something interesting that I found was this is all connected to the 2030 WF agenda and this is how I knew. Look at look above my head. You guys see that? By 2030. Anytime you see something telling you that we're reaching this goal by 2030, or the point of this is to reduce cow farts by 2030, it's always going to be connected to the World Economic Forum. Now, folks, my name is Samantha, and I am the co-owner of a two acre farmstead located here in Southeast Louisiana. What makes my husband and I a little bit different is we are debt free, totally sustainable and organic. We work with nature instead of against her. So when I talk about products like meat and food, I want it to be clean, sustainably and humanely raised. One of the big pushes for vegans and vegetarians for 3D printed meat and fake meats, right? Is that it is cruelty free. It's cruelty free. It's, um, uh, there's a couple other little, you know, odd names for it, but it's not cruelty free folks. Now I know that's hard to swallow. And I have a sister who is a full blown vegan in a family of full blown carnivores. We love her. How can you not? She's an angel. However, she would be somebody that would not watch this video. If I send it to her, she's simply not going to watch it because she has a tender heart. It's why she doesn't eat meat. But all of these 3D printers and stuff, there are so many things they're not telling you. First, they start with cancer cells, folks. Yes, cancer cells. And they start with in vitro. So I did a little bit of digging because as I'm reading the scientific report, I noticed that they're flip-flopping between in vivo and in vitro. And I'm like, oh, stop. That's not a typo or an error. That's an intentional separation of terminology and words matter, folks. So in vitro means they're using an embryo of some sort to either test or remove cells from. So when they started 3D printing meat and all of this, um, it depends now, you can get fake meat, 3D printed meat, or you can get real meat, 3D printed meat. How scary is that? You can get your vegan or your carnivore fix through 3D printed meat. And it gets pretty deep, folks but neither the 3D printed meat with real meat or vegetarian style is cruelty free because they must kill a pregnant cow to get the serum to start all of this folks. And then they're using embryos and Petri dishes to test it on. But here's the problem behind that. You don't know as a fully grown adult the chemicals and, and the processes you're using is going to be identical to what happened in that Petri dish, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So it gets really deep, and I don't know how scientific you guys want me to go, but the problem is they really don't even know how this is going to react. It is meat-like. The words they use want to comfort you. That's the first thing I noticed about the articles that I was reading. They want me to be comforted. They want me to believe that the population of the world is going up so fast that we can't feed everybody. We most certainly can. I know that because I was blessed to get into the sustainable farming 
no-till organic market garden program for the past three years. And what I learned was mind-blowing. The way that we farm is wrong. When we strip our soil of grass and weeds and we put bare soil there, it makes us think we're doing the right thing because God forbid there be a weed in your garden, right? But what we have essentially done is wash off our topsoil. Like everything they've ever, they have taught us to do goes against mass production of food. Now I have a quarter acre here, right? Heavily mulched. Guys, I pull thousands of pounds of organic food out of this garden every year. Some of the tricks that I use, not only do I not till on my clay soil, I do a lot of intercropping, right? So you've got zucchini and you've got corn. Then you've got black oil sunflower seeds on the front side. As you keep going down, all this has been filled in with watermelon as well as sweet potatoes. Then as you keep coming down the row, folks, you're coming into pumpkins, corn, <laughs> Peppers, I've got pepper plants surrounding all of my squash plants. Also, sweet potatoes interplanted across that whole thing. Plus, you've got comfrey, you've got basil, you've got peppermint. You've got all of that growing together in what might look like a jungle to an untrained eye. But what it is, folks, is a way of planting that supports and mimics nature. So when I hear them talking about billions of dollars being invested in something like 3D, 3D meat, I'm shocked. You cannot fake food and expect humans to be healthy. Food is medicine, folks. Food is medicine. So if you'd like to support what we do here at Starkey Farmstead with the knowledge that we are willing to share with you guys, updated things coming out, we'll link in how you can do that. We would appreciate it. Otherwise, I've got some great information I'm going to be doing later today on Maui and some of the things that I found out. I am going to try to go live for you guys. God bless you. Avoid 3D meat. It's not natural. It's just not natural, folks. It, it really isn't. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you other than everything they're claiming, they have no proof. They have no studies. They, they have no long-term health effects. They're doing this because the World Economic Forum wants you under their thumb. Because he who controls the food controls the people and if you want to pull out of that system right here are some things that you can do I found this somebody sent this to me and I just I fell in love with the way she wrote this prior to moving to Russia she had started underground church right like the underground railroad she began to connect churches together and growers together producers together ranchers together who had steel continued growing real foods, heirloom seeds, uh, non-GMOs, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, local meats. And she began to connect them kind of underground, not so much on social media, but oh. by word of mouth through, hi, this is so-and-so and I'd like to introduce them to you. Instead of a, you know, a, um, an email intro, an e-intro, they call it in the business world, uh, a face-to-face. -face. And she began to connect people. She found an elderly lady that had property but couldn't keep up with her yard and said, look, we'll do your yard work if you'll let us grow a garden of heirloom seeds on your property, varieties that may go extinct or hard to find in our community. 
on your property for me and my family? And, and the lady said, yes. Now that lady is part of, she's a surrogate grandmother and she's now part of the family. I hear a lot from you guys. I don't have property. You know, I live in an apartment, Sam. Folks, if there is a will, there is a way. You cannot look at what you don't have. If I looked at what I don't have, none of this would have happened. None of it. When God gave me that vision, I had no knowledge. I had no money. I had no growing skills. I knew nothing. Nothing. I didn't even own a proper pair of gardening gloves at the time. This is three and a half years later. And what we've done on this two acres is really remarkable. It, it, it is all God. Stop telling God what you don't have. See, he doesn't see what you don't have, friend. He knows what he gave you. That's what blows my mind. We look at everything the wrong way. When I say you guys need to grow food, the first thing most of you do is go, I don't have money. I don't have real good health. I don't have land. I don't have space. I don't have time. I don't know how. Really, what I'm wanting you to do is, okay, well, let's see. I'm really good at growing food. I had a garden when I lived here, but now I live here. Hmm. I need to find somebody who will partner with me. I need to find a group of people who are like-minded and we'll go to the city council and see if there's any abandoned land in our city. We'll start a nonprofit because sometimes you have to, to be able to, to work with city governments, you have to be a nonprofit, right? We'll start a company, whatever it takes folks. But if you want to survive what's coming, which is the total breakdown of real food and going to the grocery store is not going to be an option because you aren't going to have a vaccine passport or you won't have the money when they go into a cashless society. It is time, especially if you're a Christian folks, it is time to begin creating networks. It is not what you don't have that God is looking at. There is something special about you, friend. You, yep, you. Something about you that the creator of the heavens and the earth saw and thought, hmm, I'm going to give her or him the idea because that child of mine, this child of mine, is a fighter. And no matter what, they're going to see that vision through. See, God didn't give me your vision. He didn't give my vision to you. We can't all do the same things, folks. That would mean 1% of stuff would get done and 99% of stuff would never get touched. We are all individually created by an amazing creator with individual visions that once completed is a beautiful patchwork of miracles. Get out there today. Stop telling me what you don't have. Tell me what you do. Tell me your beautiful vision. Write it in the comments. What has God got you doing? Find like-minded people. Asking, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Send me someone to help me. He wants to help you. Let him. We really love you guys. Seeing you and your family be healthy and set free of a consumer environment and mentality is one of my main goals. I love you guys. The humidity is picking up because my hair is starting to get a little twisted. And I've got some stuff to do for the Montessori Academy tonight. I'm uploading a video from last night. I'm sharing with you my church's vision. I do this not to tell you guys, oh, look what we're doing. I do this to show you that if we can do it here in St. Helena Parish, if God can do it for me, he can do it for you, folks. I'm trying to build your faith. You have got to get up, put feet to your faith, friend. A vision not walked out is nothing more than an unfulfilled dream. Don't be an unfulfilled dream in your life. You've only got one. You've only got one.
Go for it, friend. What do you have to lose? Nothing. Love you guys. My name is Ayman Hussein, and I am the director of 3D printing at Alquist. Here at Alquist, we, we focus on printing homes that are affordable in the community and for the people in the area. We range between 1,500 square feet and 1,300 uh, for a single family. 